So, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Um, I want to talk to you today about uh, what what to anticipate in the upcoming releases of Arca OS. So the next the next version of 5.0 is going to be 5.0.3, uh, and that is coming very soon. Next slide, please. It's due for release in the upcoming weeks. Um, we're finishing some documentation and uh, some final testing. We'll probably have another one or two beta drops to our testers, and then it will be available for everyone. Next slide. This is slide. Uh, should be we should be on slide four right now. So the focal points, the, the major issues that we want to address, next slide, uh, are more installer improvements. Our goal is uh, to make getting the, the OS installed as painless as possible. Uh, we realize that historically that's been a real issue with, with OS2. Uh, Arca OS seems to have I hit a sweet spot with people. The most of the comments we get are that uh, installation is very smooth, but we want to do more to make that easier for uh, for more people, especially people who haven't worked with OS2 in a long time. Slide six, please. Um, so Samba updates. It's time to get Samba up to the current level. We hope to do that with uh, the 503 release. Next slide. There are always uh, other components which need updating. Uh, FAT32 is one of them. There are a few other things that aren't readily available for, for download, but uh, would normally install with the distribution. So we're going to get those worked into 503 as best we can. Next slide, please. Enhanced uh, diagnostic tools um, during during the installation. David has enhanced his test log utility, which now allows for sending the report to Arcanoe from a, from a pre-boot option. The nice thing about this is we have a situation where a user reports to us that um, he loses all keyboard control after pre-boot. This option will be able to run the test log, send it to us without any keyboard intervention after leaving the preboot menu. Next slide, please. Um, again, this will be in English only. This we're on slide nine right now. This will be an English only release. Uh, we do anticipate localized versions for 5.1, and I'll talk about those a little later on. Slide 10. Installer changes. So we've made a number of refinements to the, the installer uh, itself and, and to the installation process, so I'll, I'll cover some of those for you now. Next slide. Should be on slide 11. The locale selection is much more intuitive. Uh, this page has been completely rewritten. You can now select uh, your locale, your code page, your country, and your region. In addition to that, we've added two checkboxes, one for uh, daylight saving time and another to enable internet time synchronization right, uh, right in install. So, you no longer have to remember to do that after the system's up and running. Next slide. So there are a limited set of code page pairs for each locale. Um, generally, these have been, well, I shouldn't say generally, these have been chosen specifically to avoid the risk of ending up with a system crash when the, the system reboots. Uh, now, if you have a particular uh, pair of code pages that you use on a regular basis and um, 
you know that they work, the uh, the procedure would be to edit the config sys before the phase one to two reboots and set those code pages yourself. Next slide, please. The goal of the disk utility <clears throat> is to ensure that the system is ready for an ARC OS install. Um, we've enhanced the disk utility to detect and hopefully correct more unexpected conditions. Next slide, please. So on the progress page, when the installation is actually proceeding, we've added a status line uh, which will tell you what operation has started and what operation has finished. And you can scroll up uh, through the list to see what happened before. Um, so it should give you a lot more information about what's happening besides the progress bar just moving across the screen. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> we can consider uh, connectivity to other systems to be a vital role of the operating system. And securing that connectivity is critical. By keeping our Samba updates current, we are um, furthering those, those goals. Next slide. Arc OS ships with two distinct Samba client versions, one for mapping the drives used by the NetDrive plugin. Uh, that's behind the scenes from ArcaMapper. And the other for browsing Samba hosts. So when you're in ArcaMapper and you look at the network neighborhood, we use a different version of Samba for that. By moving up to the Samba 4.7 client, we will be able to finally unify both of those to the same Samba version so that the client used for browsing is, is the same client version used for actually mapping the drives. Next slide, please. Because Samba 4.4 and Samba 3.6 are no longer supported upstream, uh, we want to make sure that we're on the current level uh, with, with ARCA OS. Next slide, please. The uh, ARCA NOE package manager has been updated. It's a minor update. But it's got some things that we've been wanting to get in there for, for a while. Um, and the on-disk repo will be brought up to the latest level. Next slide, please. So AMPM 1.0.3 is in uh, final beta now. And um, like ARCA OS 503, we need to finish the, uh, the latest changes to documentation but uh, in packaging, but it's ready to go. We've had no problems with it in beta. It um, has enhanced package details, better message formatting when, when you get a, uh, a message back during the install from YUM or RPM. Uh, and it also has the ability to handle some package replacements. Next slide, please. The on-disk repo is not the same as the bootstrap that ships with Arca with um, Arcanoid Package Manager. It's instead a set of packages that are required in order to get a working Arca OS installed. But still, those packages need to be updated from time to time. So we're going to get the latest versions uh, available into the on-disk repo. Next slide, please. Slide 21. Updating. 
So the hard part is always getting the latest code onto an already installed system. And 503 uh, is no different in that regard. Next slide, please. Again, uh, like its predecessors, 503 is going to be a complete standalone install. Again, you'll, you'll need to format the system volume to lay down a 503 install. Next slide. Just as you'd expect, the procedure for an already installed system is to back up, install 503, and then restore what you've backed up that's changed. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. That will change, hopefully, in, in the future. Next slide. So we're planning an update utility that uh, will take an installed 503 and move it to a 504. Um, that's going to take a bit of doing, but it is in the works. We are talking about it, and we will uh, do our best to make that happen because we realize that it's not always practical to blow away a working system just to get the next version of code on. Next slide, please. Most of the code that is shipping in 503 should be available for individual download or through um, ANPM to up update an existing system. Um, one of one of our goals for 503 that we have that we sort of missed for 502 was getting the rest of that updated content into the uh, the user portal um, selections um, on the main site. We're going to try to do something about that for 503. Next slide, please. So as we talk about ArcOS 5.1, the thing to keep in mind is that these are indeed forward-looking statements. Um, we're not making any promises yet. We're, we're planning a number of things. We are discussing a number of things. We are trying to get 5.1 development organized, but we have not started it yet, and we have no formal announcement as to availability or what will be in it. So, when we talk about 5.1, we're really talking about what we would like to have and not what we absolutely positively will have. Please keep that in mind. Before we go into 5.1, maybe we should... Um, Turn off the, uh, turn the mic back on and see if there are any questions. I can't hear anyone. Do we have a mic on? Okay, I still can't can't hear anyone. So send me a chat if there are any questions in the world. Do it that way if you have to. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh. Here we go. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Okay. So, do we, do we have any questions with 503 before we move to 5.1? For months, my system drive, 
unconditionally and uh, I had the first time installed on a rather big uh, partition and, and wiped out all the other content I download and of course all uh, the configuration files from other tools. So uh, I really would like an option to not format the drive. Uh, maybe it could still in standard format the drive, but uh, if it just overrides uh, everything from the configuration, at least the other files and configuration files, which would be individual from other components, but stuck into the etc. directory and some other uh, points, would still be uh, okay. Or it would be quite less to be uh, back up without uh, killing everything on that drive. Or you should warn that you only should only install to a small, rather small system drive because the content of it will be wiped every time. Give a warning. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I understand the, the uh, problem because we, we, we've seen it ourselves. However, um, the issue is that... Oh, there we go. I, I, can, can everyone hear me? Okay, good. So I understand the I understand the, the concern. The problem from an engineering standpoint is that unless we analyze what is on that drive, it's almost impossible for us to install onto an existing drive without reformatting it because we don't know what's going to conflict with what our installation is. Um so that's why we opted early on to force a format on the system drive. When we do the, when we actually implement an update utility, that will not be necessary. We will be able to just update the code that's already on the system. But until then, it's way too risky. In fact, even if you choose a multi-volume install and you have um, other uh, applications that are on the, the other drives that you've selected, we recommend that you format those volumes because we don't know whether we're going to hit something during the install that will conflict with what we're putting down. And it'll stop the install cold. So... I understand the concern, and we do want to address it with a, an update utility, but 503 is definitely going to be a clean install on formatted volumes. More questions? Okay, ready to go. So, let's move on to, to discussing 5.1 on slide 27, please. 5.1 is going to be the next step in the evolution of the ARCA OS product. Uh, currently, we envision at least a 5.1 and a 5.2 release before 6.0, but no work has gone into planning anything beyond 5.1 at this point. Next slide. Main issues for 5.1 will be, next slide, Localization. Hopefully we'll have ARCA OS in your native language, whatever that may be. We'll talk about that a little bit more here, and, and Alex will talk about that in, in his presentation. Next slide. An upgrade facility, which will move 5.0 to 5.1. Now, this is different from an up date utility, which would move 5.0.3 to 5.0.4. This is an upgrade which will do more uh, installation work than, than just an update. Next slide, please. A migration facility will move from an existing Warp 4 MCP or ECS installation to ARCA OS in place. Again, analyzing the existing drive content is key. 
uh, to how we handle that for the install. Next slide, please. We're getting rid of selective install, finally. We, we, we plan on driving a stake through it. Um, and we're going to replace that, hopefully, with a set of focused installation utilities. So you'd have one utility to change your locale and code page. You'd have another utility to do multimedia feature installations, uh, another utility to switch video drivers and so forth. And that's that's been a, a main bone of contention for us for quite some time, the, uh, the old uh, IBM Select and Install. Next slide, please. And we'd like to add some new productivity applications, some new editors uh, and tools. We recently licensed the data transfer agent from Dr. John Gao. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, but when we released ARCA OS 5, we discovered something very interesting. We have a whole new audience of users who are classic Windows gamers. And the fact that ARCA OS plays Windows 3.1 games probably better than any other modern platform available has attracted a number of these people to, to ARCA OS. The data transfer agent gets audio from, from those WinOS 2 sessions to the UniAUG driver. So it uh, enhances that Windows 3.1 experience greatly. Next slide, please. Change the installer. Well, the 5.1 installer should have a few new features to it. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Like Arca OS itself, the installer will be localized. So if you're in Germany and you don't speak any English at all, you should be able to boot a German Arca OS uh, disk, uh, go through the pre-boot menu in German, go through the installer in German, and end up, end up with a German Arca OS without the need to have any English skills whatsoever. That's the ultimate goal. We're getting there. We have, we have a couple languages building now. They're not complete. There's still a lot of work to be done, but that's our goal. Next slide, please. The license itself, the legal uh, effect of the license will remain in English. We're very careful about translating the license to other languages because we don't want to lose any of the, the uh, intent when we, when we translate it. So we've kicked around different ways of being able to give people a courtesy copy of the license in their own language. But truly, the, the license is, is written in English, intended to be interpreted by United States courts. So the license, uh, even if you're going through in Japanese, will appear in English. Next slide, please. We're going to expand the software selections page for whatever new content we add. So you'll be able to skip them or include them as the case may be. Next slide, please. The installer remains relatively unchanged in its uh, appearance and function from 5.0 uh, into 5.1. Part of the evolution of, of the 5.0 cycle has been to refine the installer the way we, we want it to be. And we are really getting close to that, uh, to that level of functionality now. <clears throat> Next slide, please. I mentioned before about upgrade and migration. So these two, although they they sound very similar when you when you 
conceptualize them, take two very different paths from beginning to end. They're going to end up in the same place with a working Arca OS 5.1 installation, but they start from two completely different environments. Next slide, please. An upgrade moves from an older Arca OS to the latest. So everything is in place or expected to be in place insofar as the OS2 directory, MMOS2, MPTN, TCPIP, SIS, VAR, and so forth. And then what we do is we migrate what's going to be changed going into 5.1 we, or I should say we archive what's going to be changed going into 5.1, and then we lay down the 5.1 um, code, make whatever config sys changes we need to make, whatever changes we might need to do to the desktop, and reboot. And we've got a 5.1 installation. Next slide, please. Migration is a different story because migration needs to anticipate a number of different options. Whether we're moving from Warp 4 to ARCA OS, whether it's MCP, whether it's ECS. So we've got directory layouts that are different. And we may or may not actually have LVM available. And that's a, that's a big concern because we need to have LVM on the drive for ARCA OS. So we have to consider a lot more about what's on the system when we migrate to Arca OS 5 than when we're just upgrade, updating, upgrading, sorry, from 5.0 to 5.1. Let's take a look uh, now at uh, some of the other, the other features that we discussed. Next slide, please. Localization. The art of Arca OS in your own language. Next slide. We'd like to offer Arca OS in as many languages as are practical to produce and where we find there is demand. We have some ability to construct a working Arca OS build, even starting with an older Warp 4 base, updating that to the, the latest MCP code, and then turning that into the basis for ARCA OS. But it's a very tedious process. It's not yet fully refined. Uh, but when it's done, it should allow us to take some of these languages where IBM left off and actually be able to construct a modern ARCA OS 5 installation. Next slide, please. There are several factors that will determine which languages get released and when those languages get released. Alex will speak more about this in his presentation, but the ease of production, uh, the availability of resources, both human resources and, and code, and the market conditions will determine what languages we do and which ones we do ahead of others. Next slide, please. I've talked in uh, at previous Wormstock events about putting multiple languages on one disk image. That is not going to be the case. We decided not to go that route for a number of, of reasons not the least of which is after we add three or four or five languages, the download size gets to be enormous. So each language will be on a, sep a separate distribution. And every Arca OS licensee will be able to download whatever language he wants. So you don't need to buy the German version of Arca OS 5.1. You license Arca OS 5, uh, 
and then you can download the the U.S. English version, German, or whatever languages we have. Next slide, please. The USB stick package will also be localized. So if you need to create a USB stick, and tomorrow I will talk about creating that on, uh, on Linux, but if you need to download the USB stick package, again, you won't need to be able to run that. In, you won't need to run that in English. You'll be able to run that in your native language. Next slide, please. There is a lot of extra stuff in ARCA OS beyond what IBM provides for us in MCP2. All of that has to be translated. Now, for some things, there are translations available. Some things, the translations are out of date. And there's still more that hasn't been translated at all. For that, we need translators. A lot of that code is all open source, benefits everyone in the community. Um, and it's, it's good, rewarding work to put your language skills to use, translating for other users in your native language. So please contact us. Alex will have the contact email tomorrow. Um, but drop us an email and say, look, I, I'd love to help. I've got some language skills with, with um, Swahili. Um, and we'll, we'll sign you up to the translation team. And if and when we do a Swahili version, we will be in touch. Next slide, please. So we do envision some new content in 5.1. Uh, I want to give you some examples. Next slide. Greg was just talking about gotcha. Well, we, we, we plan to include gotcha in the ARCA OS 5.1 installation. And we might like to include that during the installation uh, process itself because we find that sometimes we will run into difficulty with the installer and a picture's worth a thousand words. Being able to snap us an image of the screen during the inst installation and upload that to us from the, the management uh, console will make our job a lot easier on this end and get the user up and running faster. So we want to include Gotcha with the 5.1 um, release. Next slide, please. I talked before about the data transfer agent. Uh, we want to include that with 5.1. Um, mainly, the data transfer agent is, is working. It's the installation that needs to be refined. So we, we will work on, on doing that. It also needs to be localized, and we haven't even started looking at that yet. Next slide, please. I talked before about selective install and, and getting that out of there. And um, these new utilities will be easier to maintain, but we'll be able to update them individually instead of one giant selective install utility that either never gets updated or requires massive updating to keep it current with the system. Next slide, please. Actually, that was what I just wanted to talk about, the, uh, the tools being standalone and individually upgradable. Next slide, 53. We expect to include at least a couple more editors, one you probably know, one you may not know, uh, and some other tools um, that will make the overall experience better out of the box without having to hunt down additional tools to do your work. Um, we're still considering what that content is going to be, so Nothing is set in stone at this point, but we do want to we do want to enhance the offering. Next slide, please. 
I want to give you a peek at some of the things which are currently happening at ARCA NOE beyond ARCA OS. Next slide. David is constantly working to refine and enhance our selection of critical device drivers. He can speak more to the specifics, but as you probably know, we release updated packages on a fairly regular basis. Next slide. <clears throat> 